Well, welcome to my uh, lecture on the Italian game, uh, the second part. And uh, my last video I covered sort of, I should have called it the basic second and third moves for white after e4, e5 is what it should have been called. But uh, sort of, I was saying, how did white get to this position? But uh, just to back up, the moves for the Italian game are e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. So, you have to ask yourself, uh oh, you know, what is white's plan? Now, I've already covered in a different lecture that when you play e4, white is saying, I'm going to get out my pieces and just attack you. Okay, as quickly as possible. When black plays, responds e4, black is saying, good, I'm going to fight for you toe to toe in this center and in, in for development. So now what we have is the Italian game. So, you know, what does it mean when white puts its bishop right here? Here, let me go over this. Um, what is white's plan? Well, here's white's plan. The bishop attacks the vulnerable f7 pawn. And I sort of mentioned this in my last lecture, that this pawn for black, this pawn for white are the most vulnerable so these can become a uh, subject to attack so black I mean white is already aiming its bishop right at this pawn okay what is the uh, next thing well white is preparing plans to play d4 and remember I always said uh, for when white plays e4 it's always going to try to play d4 because if it can do that, it can usually control the center. So now, basically, white wants to prepare d4 by first playing c3 and then d4. Okay. What's the uh, next thing in bl uh, white's basic plan is rapid development. Okay, so let's get all of its pieces out as quickly as possible which is actually just goes along with the e-pawn opening and then f4 it wants to catch the black king in the center or at least for a kingside attack so the Italian game is sort of known for hey I'm gonna try to trap the black king in the center and try to checkmate it or win it there and we'll notice that uh, later that um, some of these lines you'll see exactly that. White's going to give up a piece or a pawn to try to keep the black king in the center and to attack it. Okay, so, uh, you know, me personally, I'd rather give up a pawn and checkmate my opponent. So, so what are black's plans or maybe goals since it's those that. So when black sees this opening, it should, you know, it should consider what white's plans are. Okay, you know, if you're black, you gotta say, okay, you're gonna try to attack my f7 pawn. You're gonna probably try to play d4, but you first want to play c3, uh, or support that move of d4 with the with the c3 pawn. Uh, you're gonna try to get all your pieces out as quickly as possible, and you're gonna try to catch my king in the center. So black's plan of action should be, it should try to castle just as soon as possible to get the king out of the center and safely tucked away. It too is striving for rapid development. So like I said, the, the uh, going back, when, when black plays e5, it's saying I'm going to fight for you toe to toe in the center control development. Three, uh, counterattack when possible. Okay, that means I'm going to attack pawns. Uh, to keep you off balance because white doesn't want to lose material so it will try to counter attack and a four play d5 if necessary I want to say um, you'll notice in some of these these type of games like the Italian game that um, and maybe some of the other openings that the free move for black uh, or the the move that can sort of disrupt whites quick attack chances is if if black just plays d5, whether it's a sacrifice or as um, if white sacrifices a pawn, you're going to play d5 and get the pawn back. Okay, and it's going to sort of trip up white. So let's look at um, what, after white plays c4, what are the most three common responses by black? 
one of the three most common responses if I bring this up. So, you know, move three here, C4, that's the Italian game. Uh, the three most common responses by black are one, the, the Joko Piano. I think that's pronounced Joko, so I'm not great at pronouncing all the names of the chess openings. And You know, uh, if you want to correct me, go ahead, but uh, I think it's pronounced Joko Piano. And it means actually the quiet game. Uh, that much I know. Uh, the second most common move for black is knight f6, the two knights defense. And the third uh, most common move for black is e7. So let me just show you these on the board. So the first one we said the most common move, uh, which leads, is this move for black. It's called the uh, Joko Piano. Okay, the next most common move is this move, knight f6, which is called the two knights defense. And then the third most common move is this move here, bishop e7, which is known as the Hungarian defense. Okay, so, so just remember after, uh, so, this this line up here is once white gets to this this position this is known as the Italian game and then black has three possibilities it can move its bishop here the Joko Piano it can move its knight here the two knights defense or move the bishop here which is known as the uh, Hungarian defense so let me now discuss the uh, Joko Piano so the Joko Piano, as I described earlier, is when black moves its bishop to c5. I just want to say that actually this game can be become quite boring just by typical moves, just by ordinary moves. So actually my first part of the lecture on the Joko Piano is going to say that this that there's problems for white. You know, white wants to, remember I said, keep the king in the center, attack and rapid development, but if white just plays somewhat uh, quote-unquote ordinary moves, it's, it'll find itself in a very uh, sort of dull, boring game. And actually, Joko Piano means the quiet game. So let me show you what I mean. Is that here's the typical problems for white. One is white plays too slowly. Okay, uh, basically white plays d3 and knight, knight c3. Okay, so let me show you an example. So here this line, this first line is actually, this is just a Joko Piano. And uh, so let's say, um, you know, we're going to follow uh, the, the, the advice where I said, well, you know, one of the things that white wants to do is play d4, but it wants to support d4 with c3. So, you know, white just plays c3. Uh, Whoops, or I'll take that back. It doesn't even, or it just quietly plays d3, and then black plays knight f6, and then white plays knight c3, which I have in my example. Sorry, I got ahead for the ex other example. So this is just playing too quietly, and then uh, black plays d6. And now, actually, you gotta ask yourself, what is White's plan? It's sort of hard to come up with one. And uh, I want to point out when I say White played too slowly is that remember I said it wanted to play Knight C3 or Pawn C3, so it could play D4. But now White's Knight is blocking that one, so White has a problem. This is White playing too slowly, even though it played somewhat ordinary moves. The other example I was going for was where, um, here, let me show you, black counterattacks d4 pawn, so white plays c3 and d3, so white plays its plan of playing c3, but then black, what happens is black counterattacks uh, white's pawn, and then white decides to protect the pawn, so it goes something like this, so uh, after the Joko Piano, White says, okay, I'm going to continue with the plan, playing c3d4, but then Black decides to say, well, guess what, uh, now I'm going to 
make this move and attack your pawn and now you're forced with defending the pawn so white plays this and then black plays this so this is uh, two examples of problems for white 